Kicks Out of Life here. We're here with an awesome photographer, very talented, Fred Go. What's up, man? How you doing, brother? Man, doing I appreciate good? you. Thank you for being here. First of all, I want to start off the question, favorite shoe of all time? Oh, it's actually over there right by you. Uh, the Jordan 1 bread, this is a, I think it's the 2011s. Uh, it's kind of when I just really got into the whole Jordan thing. Uh, I got 18 pair of Jordan 1s, different colors, high, and then the, I never do the mids. Never do the mids. You don't do the mids. So yeah, but yeah, the Jordan 1, and, but this one in particular. All right. So got a quick story about these Jordan 1s in 2000. Um, they started coming back out with the Jordan Jordan 1s. First, they came back with the Concord Jordan 11s, which I always say is my favorite shoe of all time. So they dropped these, and they drop them. Um, they drop this pair, and they drop the blue, the black and blue pair. The Royals? The Royals yeah. for about $100 or $99. And I get them, <laughs> and on the tongue, at that time, you would wait on the line, and you would call Nike to make the call. And it would have, like... Uh, one of whatever number on them. I know. Yeah. I get those shoes, man. I got my storage. They keep breaking in. Some of my stuff is gone. I haven't gone through all. That's the one pair that I cannot find. And you know when they talk about you don't wear your shoes, but this is a pair of shoe that holds up over time, mm -hmm. and you can still wear it because I still got my Royals, and I can still wear them 20 years later. So. Um, I see you got on your Tokyo, Tokyo Jordan 1s. Yeah, man. Those are fire. So you talk about mids, early 2000s. They had like a mid pair. I had those, but Ooh. not these. That's high level, man. How'd you, uh, did you get those here in Houston? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I got these retail. Um, I get most of mine's retail. I try my, you know, just through the, through the grapevine. And then, you know, I tried the app. And I've been in it before the whole app thing, you know. Because when COVID came out, it just got ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, I've been into like since 2011. So I've just been getting them, getting them. Uh, I think my last pair is going to be the Lost and Founds that I recently got. Gotcha. And I think I'm, it's like, it's enough. Yeah. It's, like, it's like one side of the closet, Jordan 1s, and then it's like some 3s, yeah, some 2s, yeah. and then some New Balances and stuff like that. So yeah. You know, the, the Jordan 1 craze, I don't actually know what time it like hit where these just popped back up. but. It is a real classy shoe where you see people of all walks of life wearing that shoe. Um, the ladies love the shoe. And it's just a real classy shoe that you can throw on. And now you see doctors and lawyers in suits wearing the Jordan 1s. And you know, I find that, uh, I find that very, very awesome, especially for the shoe culture. So tell us about these that you got on your other, other side there. Yeah, these are the airships. These were the original shoes that Jordan wore, it was uh, in the black. I tried to get those, yeah. I couldn't get that. I wasn't about to pay extra though. So this, this is the original silhouette that Jordan wore. And I always was like, why didn't they do these instead? You know, and instead of being, uh, and, you know, creating something new, they just went with the something old. Cause you know, the whole saying like, was it after the Jordan 19 or uh -huh. 20s? None of those count anymore. Yeah, what, yeah, what year yeah. did he stop playing? They, he played in the 18s. If I'm correct, he wore them. It was he didn't wear, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the 18s is the last pair he uh, wore. I actually like the 20s mm -hmm. myself, but um, yeah, it was the 18s. And the crazy thing when you say this, a lot of people, they talk about the band commercial, mm -hmm. but like you said, it was the airship that was the original shoe that actually got banned. They just, I think they put a Jordan logo on it, mm -hmm. but it was the bulls, the black and red colorway in the airships because this was like your average Nike team shoe back then in, yeah. in 1980, what was it, uh, four. four yeah. And then, so this is what he wore until while his Jordan 1 was in, um, was in process while they were making it. And then when that came out, he went strictly to that. Yeah, so yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm that wide toe box, the high heel, the high level leather, good strip you know the st uh, stitching and everything so i'm just into that type of stuff uh like the harachis and things like that i don't like those because i feel like it's even though it is a good shoe it's yeah. not put together really good in my opinion like i could actually go out and hoop in these if i wanted to i mean i'm not saying they're gonna be super comfortable yeah but i'm not gonna bust through them i'm not gonna I do a you. zion yeah i got you and by the way you know it just happened to be i wore my jordan ones i think these are the 
Jordan 1 Haze, but I like them. Like I said, it's a classy shoe. I can put on. I feel I look good in it. You well, know, it makes me look better gray, than great minds. Yeah. minds. Great minds. Great yeah, minds. Yeah, yeah. Got a little. Yeah, great minds. Think of like great bottom right there. <laughs> so you're a photographer. Yeah. It's a form of art. Mm -hmm. I, I got to look at your art. And by the way, can you give a shout out to your social media, please? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, social media is uh, Fred Ago, F R E D A G H O. Uh, you can also check me out on Twitter. It's Fred Ago. It's the same thing, but underscore. My website is www.fujifred, so F-U-J-I, fred.com. Uh, I'm on everything else. TikTok, Fred Ago as well. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do all the, the cool, young, hip stuff, so you can check me out at all those places. And by the way, we're here in your studio. Yeah. And this was real awesome when you said, hey, meet me at your, my studio. Just awesome. We're going to get a, a little view of this later, but I was really impressed with that. Just And not only that, it's where you are. We're in the art district area right down the street you know we have yeah, the, museums uh, and, and everything in, around in the Houston corner. area and like I said it's a form of form of art what you do and art is subjective to people and it just really took me to really find a love of art to really be able to look at what other people do like this and how did you get into photography uh, essentially I was I'm the oldest born uh, I'm Nigerian background so oldest born means that you do everything your parents tell you to do. So we would have events and parties and things like that, and I was the automatic hostess, mm. AKA photographer, AKA take the trash out, AKA bring auntie a drink, AKA whatever. So I kind of grew the love for photography at that point. Um, I didn't get serious into it till my last year of college football, mm. play football at University of Houston. Okay. So we were traveling around and I was like, man, I'm going to Oregon, I'm going to Miami, the Orange Bowl, they're about to close that down. So I said, let me just take this opportunity to you know, take a camera with me and start a photograph. None of the photos are good. Mm. They're not good. <laughs> but it's cool to see you know, where I've come from. But uh, So I got into it like that and then I kind of got in the rut of just photography for money but when COVID happened I really stepped back and was just shooting for me and so some of the pieces that mm -hmm. you see on here there's just the stories that I wanted to tell yeah. and you can go check out his Instagram and you can see a lot of these this photography that he's talking about and really get a glimpse of those stories so you can see his art and by the way kicks out of life is about telling stories through shoes mm -hmm. so how do you envision the story? How can we see the story through your lens? Man, so what I do is I try to tell the stories of the people who look and feel like me, okay? Uh, we all are on this big you know, round planet and we're doing our things and we all have uh, perceptions and stories to tell. So what I do with the lens is I tell the stories of, the, like I said, the people who look and feel like me. Not everybody is, um, not everybody's into, in love with tennis shoes, you know? Not everybody understands how tennis shoes play a, 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 a pivotal point in everybody's life. Like, I, I, I'm not saying it's right, but you were the kid, if the shoes weren't tight, you were the kid who got haggled, you know? I'm not saying that it was okay, but those are things that you grow up remembering and they shape who you were. I, could, I, don't, I don't think I had my first Jordans. Talk about them? Mm -hmm. So I think I bought my first pair of Georgians, or it might have been a gift, yeah. one or two, but I was an adult. Same here. Yeah. Same here. I also got another crazy story I'm going to tell another time, finding my first, what I thought were going to be my first pair of Jordans, Jordan 2s in 1994 at Ross, but I'm going to tell those, that story another time. <laughs> got faked out. Yeah, well, <laughs> I had two left feet is what I came out <laughs> you know? But, um, okay, so... This, what do you prefer when we talk about, photography has, has evolved, and I work in the business of basketball, mm -hmm. and now, man, you're behind if you don't have a videographer with you, or a camera guy, but what do you prefer? Do you prefer photography or the, the video aspect of it? Oh, uh, I prefer photo the art of photography, the, the, you know, the stillness and that moment, because what it does, it locks in a moment in time. It's like, boom. That's not happening again. You can replicate it, but it's a replication. It's not the original thing. So I prefer photography. Now with videography, I understand the nature of the world that we live in. So you'll be a fool, unless you're at the top, top echelon of mm -hmm. photography, not to kind of use photography, I mean, videography 
to prepare yourself. So like I recently did a, was it a, a reel? And it was like my this, first this wash. wash. Yeah. So yeah guys, so if you, again, please get over to, is it Instagram the only place they can see that right now? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So the Instagram I'm, I'm going through and I have a whole other story how we even got here, but I see this deal washed and I'm like, it's, from a glance, it seems so simple where you're going into the wash interior, I'll let you tell it, but I was so intrigued and I was like, man, this, is, this should be in a movie. I see how it gets into these, like I see where they, people in movies and shows put things together and this little reel that you did, tell us about that, please. Oh uh, man, just kids were going back to school and I just had some time on my hands, so I just started writing. Because I don't write, I never wrote. I would always have the ideas and I would so just- So you like Jay-Z on the mic, just stepping just, up. Just doing it. But this time I had to write it out. I wrote down the scene. I wrote down every you know angle that I was gonna shoot. I, and I, then I wrote down the premise of Washed, you know, talking about some, you know, how as people of our age, you're in this world where it's just young, really fast. Mm -hmm. Like before our parents, their age, that the world was theirs at this age. Yes. Now it's like the kids, it's their world. Tell you me know, that. like I, it's not too many people our age on TikTok, yeah. you know, doing the dances yeah. and everything. Like, so it's, you look at that and you're like, man, am I washed? Am I like behind? Am I not getting it done? So that was just me trying to tell that little story and I just had fun with it. I, I, I'm not gonna curse, but you just kind of have to not give a F. Yeah. And, just do stuff. And so I, we were talking yesterday and the response you got from that, like with the feedback. I was me. surprised. I, I, I thought it was just gonna like go and just keep it moving, but. And you did this just as just a little thing you were putting out. Yeah, and that's it. Well, I think I told you is like the best things happen when you're just messing around, putting it together. Hey, let me got this idea. Sunflower yeah. photo, same thing. Yeah. Hit the homie up and was like, hey bro, let's go shoot and boom. And it turned into a thing, got viewed, the photo has been viewed over a million times. Wow. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, yeah, man, we'll take these pictures and they're gonna get viewed a million times. It was just like, man, this story's in my head, let's get it out. Yes. So around the world, you wanna find a worldly, a guy that can, can really get those shots for you? Fred here, he got you, please look him up. Let's get it, what, so tell us some of the other things that you might, um, some people, could use you for with your photography? Well, I, uh, mostly I'm like a commercial photographer. So if you need products, lifestyle, campaigns, things like that, I'll get it done. I still dibble and dabble on the weddings, uh, family portraits, you know, that's what the whole yeah. studio's for. So we do all that. I like the uh, one I saw one, I think it was you and your daughter in the snow. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that uh, in Houston? It was Houston, remember the that snow, was the the snow, snow storm. Storm. Yeah, yeah. was. But, but you know, I couldn't tell the, the shot thought you might have been in Antarctica just, somewhere. No, I went and found the deepest. I was like, all right, we gotta go to where the snow is the deepest. So we have this pond by us and it really laid on, it was yeah. probably about two feet deep. So I was like, all right, if we go here, and um, I'm in uh, the Cypress area, so it kind of goes down, you know how water yeah, will go. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, if I get in here, we could actually do some angels yeah. and we'll be okay. That was pretty awesome. So one of the, I found you is uh, Jennifer Ford, mm -hmm. um, owner of uh, premium Good. goods here in Houston. And they have a boutique in Houston and New York, but it's known all over the country. I personally think it's well, the best shoe boutique here in the city. And I always see these shots. I'm, Jennifer and I, we communicate sometimes, maybe, hey, do you have this person that could do this or that? And like, can they meet with, my, with a photographer here? And then one day I was looking on someone's story and it was kind of like a story. It was a picture of the photographer doing the shot. And I said, man, that's Fred. And that's kind of how we got here. So tell us how that, like the, the, the taking the pictures of the shoes, how you got into that. And, and you know, the, if you ever go to premiumgoods.com or check out Premium Goods Houston on Instagram, awesome shots, that's you right there. Yeah, I'll, I'll say about 50 to 70 percent okay. of the stuff is me. Uh, just relationships. Uh, I, I, number one thing I try to, and I'm going to come back to yeah. it, I try to tell young photographers is people aren't going to, it's not an instant payday. You kind of have to stay around for a while. Like that relationship that got me into premium goods is over 10 years old. Mm. So um, 
his name is Arby. He's over there doing amazing things on the mm -hmm. creative side. And we've done stuff together before. And uh, he just, he was trying to, you know, use other people and seeing if he could get it to happen. And I was like, look, man, I got the space. I know what I'm doing. Let's just get it to happen. And we've been rocking and rolling since yeah. then. Uh, my favorite shoot from, uh, from with them is probably like, uh, what's the kid in uh, Beaumont? Yeah, so I was going to ask you. So the crazy thing is Wesley Yates actually played for me. And actually part of the reason why I'm here is just another backstory with Jennifer about that, um, that photo shoot. So Wesley Yates going to Washington. You did the photo shoot for the Jordan 3s. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I wanted to ask too, like, what is your favorite shoe that you've shot so far? For them? Hmm. What shots did I like the most? Those foam posits. It was like a red foam posit. We like strung it up and everything. Ooh, I saw that. And so it looks exactly like a Nike ad. Like yeah. you would never know that Nike didn't even do it. So right now I think that was like the most technical shoot. Cause now at, at this point I don't I, I like doing the shoot yeah. stuff very technical. I like getting it done right in camera. So when I shot that, I was just like, oh, that's crap. That's, that's crazy. So, so I have the first release of that shoe. I think it was 2014. Mm -hmm. They added a little bit of leather to this one. Mm -hmm. But I actually got to sit down with Penny mm -hmm. and talk. And hopefully we're going to have an interview dropping soon. And he, he loves his foam posits. He really loves the white ones. And I, was, I asked him, I said, Penny, man, every time you get a shoe, how many pairs you get? He says he gets 40 pairs of every release. I said, 40? I said, what are you doing with 40? He said, man, I got friends, I got family. But I mean, that's a big time shoe. And what people don't understand, I personally think that that foam posit having a lot to do with it, Little Penny having a lot to do with it, he to me is the second most influential athlete in sneakers. Mm. Because we're talking about 30 years of selling shoes, right? So that phone posit you shot in 2023, Penny was wearing player exclusives and then the Penny one in 94, but came from 93. So it is Jordan then. So that's, that's me, because it's 30 years. Yeah, people are hot, but 30 years of selling shoes. How long is LeBron selling shoes for? Man, you know, it's, it's 20, but, and, and I love LeBrons. I love them. LeBron 15s, the creativity they did when they did like the Dion mix and all that, but when LeBron retires, which is probably going to happen in the next three or four years, whenever and LeBron, and when everybody yes. gets there, who's going to be rocking those five, ten years later? You know. So the thing about and what Penny said, he always wanted shoes that people would wear off the court, and these these kids, they're buying phone okay. posits. They so don't even know. We're going to go into debate. Yeah. So Jordan, Bronny, LeBron. Um, gosh, you got me with that one. I'm trying to think of a. I mean, people say Kobe. Kobe. So the thing about the Kobe's is, but that's R.I.P. Not off -court it's that's not, not an off-court. Off and piece. what I think Nike has done a great job is slow dripping the Kobe. So low de um, low numbers, high demand. You know, it builds it up. But that's why I say the the influence of Penny. Then, not even to mention, the little Penny might be the best sneaker campaign ever. I don't know. I did like the puppets with Kobe and LeBron. Jordan, Jordan and Spike Lee and the Mars and all the that. The Barclays. I like Barclays. That was a great one. No, those you're right. Like, those you're right. Like but movies. we got to take personal. But I went back, okay, did Barkley, and we got to do the research. I went back and looked. Did Barkley have a Super Bowl commercial? You know how big it is to have a Super no, Bowl commercial. Right. Little Penny and them had, a Super, had a Super Bowl, Bowl commercial. Super Bowl commercial. Okay. You know, so okay. that's my, that's, that's my you, look on you're that. You're the expert here. Yeah, well, nah, I, we I all dibble, I dibble and dabble. <laughs> that's my, my thought. Hey, one thing I don't want to take away is, man, really, um, I'm a basketball guy, but the, the yeah. grind in football, and here's why, there's a job that someone has to do With that is not, is, is not fun. You got to just fill a hole so someone can else can make a play and get the glory, right? Yeah. So tell us, like, like, I respect that blood, sweat, and tears you did on the field at U of H. I'm a U of H Cougar, so that's big ups for that right there. My boy Everest in the background, U of H Cougar also, and many other friends. Um, you know, like, tell us about, like, your love for football, and then I want to follow up 
your favorite athlete of all time? Any sport, any reason. But let's talk about your, your grind with football real quick. Y'all gonna hate me. Uh, I really doubled down on football because I just got this body. Gotcha. If I had like a more basketball body, mm -hmm. I would have really yeah. tried to double. Because I'm a, so I'll go, one, I do love football. I love yeah. the one-on-one, -on -one. I love competing. Yeah. I love the camaraderie, because there's way more camaraderie yeah. in football. It's the most, I think it's the most yeah. of any sport. Yeah, because you, it brings up people from completely different backgrounds. We all come together. It, I really love football. But if I was like my brother who was 6'6", six, six, mm -hmm. bro, I would have I been hooping. I would have went all the way. I would have league, league or bust. Yeah, yes. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, um, man, nah, but what, what basketball, in my opinion, in my opinion, what football does that basketball doesn't is we got way more adversity, mm -hmm. like a lot. It's like with basketball, it was what, 14, it was 17 people, mm -hmm. right? So there's only one dude behind you. Yeah. And if you're the guy, you're the guy. And there's the likelihood of injury is low. Yeah. So if you do get injured and you come back, you're still the guy. It's boom. Yeah. Football, there's one, two guys behind you. And then they're still looking for another yes. dude. Yeah. And if that dude is the guy, he can jump all of y'all mm. and be playing instantly. We all get injured. Yeah. You're going it's Part not of the if. game. Yeah. It's not if, it's when. when yeah. You're gonna get injured. And then it's how can you get over the injured yeah. and come back and be one hundred percent. So, yeah, but if I was 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, I don't know. I don't know. Right. People see me come up, they're like, oh, football player, and then I hit them with that. <laughs> I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> Favorite athlete all time? Oh, uh, gosh. So, I modeled my game, because once they put me in the paint, I was like, all right, cool, I'm not going to get to. You know, it's high school. Yeah, yeah. You're 6'2", you're, you're center. Yeah, yeah, so I was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to still be a little flashy and still be dominant. Dominic Wilkins. Mm. I just really loved that. He just would dunk, like, he didn't care. Yeah. He was out there to punish everybody. I mean, he has a son, I think it's a junior, 2025, 20, mm -hmm. who's on the rise. And he, he's got his bounce, you know, a little bit of that skill. So we're going to see. I, I don't know his uh, full name. We're going to get it up there on the scene, but he has a young son yeah, coming. Uh, he's a, I think he's a junior in high school. I, I think, so I've been dunking since I've been in it. On the way to the eighth grade. Okay. So I've been dunking since then. Uh, official on paper is 41 inches. Okay. So. Okay. Still got some of that bounce? No, I <laughs> That rim is really high now. I used I, to be this big, so. What, let me ask you, do you have a favorite football shoe um, the one that could go off court. So I know Deion Sanders oh, Deion. is making a, a big deal. Yeah. It's Deion. And what I saw is what I saw um, in the, the locker sun? room at, T, uh, at TCU, he laid out, they put the Deons, but they put them like on a, um, on a cushion bottom, mm -hmm. like of a, uh, I, I forgot, like of a running so the, shoe. The, 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 so it's the Deion it's up the top. Out. It's the out of the Deion, the, the squiggly line ones, which I think is his like second or third pair. And they put it on like a, uh, it was almost like on a coaching shoe, a foam bottom. And we'll see how those come out. Then, uh, but you know, a sleeper, which I love, was the Junior Seals. They had the strap. Mm. It came out the same year as the Pennies, as the Concords. I'm going to get a picture, but that's my favorite football shoe. But Dion, I had the Deons. So yes, was, I, I had a pair of the Deons too. And, and, and these were hunky, big. They were just like a box. Hey, hey, listen, when I tell you Michael Jordan did a Gatorade commercial, I forgot which one, where he's running to the top of the mountain uh -huh. and he drinks the Gatorade, he's in the Dion. So if you got a commercial and you got Jordan wearing your shoes, you, you, done, you, you, done, you done made it. it. But everybody go, and let's tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. I felt the Dion's was a better hooping shoe than anything. Oh, it was a hooping shoe, man. And back then, when <laughs> those shoes came out, people were hooping them. I was hooping them. them. That was a hooping right. shoe. Real quick, any shoe, let's say time is not, doesn't matter a shoe that you would like to photograph? Your dream shoe to photograph? Hmm. 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 It's hard. It'd probably be the ships, the originals. Mm. Like, I would love this to like, them come right off his feet after a game. 
and then I would take a so this would be like a canvas backdrop. I would shoot the like the shoe. Let's just say the first time he scored over 20 points. Yeah. I would shoot the shoe and then put the score that he the amount of points he made right above it, Jordan logo, and we out of there. Yeah, Let's yeah. keep it clean, man. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I when you say that, I picture like the shoe like this, but in the ship, but kind of with a yellowing. And I like the way Nike's add that aging. Seal is what it called, seal, sail? I, I don't even know what they call it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sail, the, the, sail. The, the the colorway, yes, yeah. yeah, like a sail colorway. But I like it, you know, and mm -hmm. it, it makes me feel good because I got some yellowing shoes that now I can wear and just slide, just slide right on in. Yeah, yeah, that's how it came. All right, last one. So obviously you're, you know, we're talking about shoes, Kicks Out of Life is talking about shoes, but you do way more. Something that you would like to photograph of anything, like, if I was a photographer, mm -hmm. I would love to be on a, in a safari or something, and maybe, uh, you know, it, I would love to see the cats, but I think a rhino, you know, something like that. But just of anything in this world that you would like to I got to go. two. Go ahead. I would love to photograph Obama. Okay. And then I would love to go where my parents grew up. Okay. Like both. Where is that? Where is that? In Nigeria, they okay. both grew up. I would love to go like to, the places that they grew up and and visited and frequented, and I'm try, I would love to do that before you know because yeah. we all got to go. Yeah, I would love to do so that. So that's before. on that's that's on that's the list. Something I want to do. Okay. I would make a book and then give it to them. Oh man! So they can like you know just be like man because they haven't been there since they've been children. Gotcha. Well, man, I appreciate you taking the time and inviting appreciate us you to having this me, man. Beautiful space. No problem. Kicks out of life. We appreciate. Fred taking his time with us, and we hope you'll continue to take a kick out of life with us. Sure.